Hello. Um, excuse me. Um, let me fix this. So, my name is Dr. Andre Jeffords. I have been the lead researcher on the SBC 05-2005 project. Um, we've kind of hit a snag. So, our, uh, our team was notified to the disappearances of several, um, individuals. It started, it was just, um, high school students. And then it became um, adults. And the, the weird nature of it all um, drew the foundation's, drew the foundation's attention. And so I was called to investigate. And um, there was a home in uh, Federal Way, Washington. Um, I went to the home. I was invited there by the father um, who had been a uh, 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 informant for the um, SBC Foundation. And he uh, informed me. We sat down, we talked, and he talked about his son. Now, his son had recently gotten into making ASMR videos, um, which requires one to sit in front of a camera and talk or tap on things or what have you. Um, his son had a pretty um, regular schedule. Um, he did his after school activities. Um, he'd come home, he'd do homework, he'd eat supper, then he'd go into his room, he would do his videos, um, he would do some gaming, he would go to bed. So, pretty regular activities for a teenage boy. Um, I asked the father if I could see the room, and he let me into the room, and I, and I went in, and I looked around and I looked at his setup, which is kind of like what I have here. So you could see from my, my glasses here, you can see my, my white ring of light around my camera so that you could see me. Um, I went into his, uh, um, his room and I checked out his desk and um, it happened to be pure chance his father got a phone call and had to leave the room and that's when I was free to really search and I looked at the kid's computer and um, I noticed the kid had a cell phone that um, had fallen to the floor and I picked it up and I looked at it and I began to look through it and I noticed that it was one of those cell phones where you could touch it to another cell phone and and send information. And so I checked the cell phone out. Um, in fact, I was unable to procure the cell phone, but I was able to touch it to my cell phone and get the information that I needed. And um, it was an open file that was on this phone and I put his phone back in the position, put my phone away. His father returned to the room and asked me if I found anything. Obviously, I, at this point, it's, it's important that the SBC Foundation um, conduct some research first before we uh, uh, release any information, if that information is allowed to be released. Um, the director is pretty strict on how he wanted the information handled. And so uh, when I finished um, looking, 
I went back. Um, I, I told the father, I'm, I'm sorry, I have no information at this time. But once we discover something, we'll, we will, you will be the first we inform. And I went to the office the next day and began my research. And I extrapolated the information I took from my cell phone. And as I looked at the information on my cell phone, uh, again, he was just a normal boy. He did his normal videos, and then he would end his videos. He had a number of videos. I watched his channel. Um, there is something I did notice about the app. The app was not like the normal YouTube app that I noticed. And as I looked at it, I realized that it was it was glowing, flashing. Um, the YouTube app doesn't normally flash. It usually doesn't exhibit animation. And this one was exhibiting some sort of uh, surface animation. And as I ran out of time and all the tests that we ran led to nothing um researched this um app for weeks and weeks and finally um i was allowed and clear to do some research at home um the opportunity came up because the director was wanting some information because people um um, had stopped disappearing, but still the fact that these people were missing was a problem. So I went home and I sat down and I decided to, I decided to make a video on the app. And when I was finished making the video, um, there was no changes, nothing, nothing weird happened, nothing that stood out to me occurred. It wasn't until the next day when I attempted to go to work and I stepped outside of my house and the first thing I noticed was my porch was cut, not cut. It was, it was as if a curtain of darkness had fallen over it and the curtain kind of ran in a, a cookie cutter, wavy kind of way around my house and around my property. I could not see my car. I could not see my neighbor's house. In fact, I looked up into the night sky and I realized that I wasn't looking at the night sky. There was no sky, it was just darkness. I could see nothing. And so I walked down the path from my porch towards the darkness. And when I got to it, I, it felt, it felt solid, but it felt like I could move through it. And so I began to push through it. And when, um, as I pushed, it got more and more difficult but finally it gave and it let me through. And when I came out on the other side, I was back inside my room. So, it seems that the app has brought me inside of some sort of pocket dimension. Um, I've been here by my calculations 
<sighs> two years. And I've been making video after video on my findings. Um, ever since, um, I've discovered that um, I can go to my fridge and I can still cook and clean and eat, prepare food on a daily basis. Um, I can step outside my front door. I can step outside my back door. I can walk completely around my house. I can get in my car. But as soon as I back out, I reappear back here in my room. I've been unable to contact anyone. My wife wasn't home at the time that I started recording, so she isn't here. I'm home alone, or maybe this is a copy of my home. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure. All I know is, after 24 hours have passed, I get up, I shower, I eat breakfast, I go through my normal day, and whatever food that I ate that day, when I go back to my fridge. It's back in my fridge. No more, no less. Um, uh, I still have all the research that I started to actually write down all of my reports, but I have no one to give them to. I've sent email after email I've made phone calls but um, I can leave messages but no one ever picks up um, so I'm hoping that as I make these videos someone will see them and find me and maybe figure out a way to get me out of here I don't know. I'm not aging. At least I haven't noticed any signs of aging yet. Um, because I can count the hours, that is how I measure my days here. That is how I know I've been here approximately two years. But I have no way of knowing where time is outside of this pocket dimension. Um, oh, there is some good news. I found the missing kids. I found the missing people. They are all in my contact list. They are all on YouTube. But I can't communicate with them. Or at least I haven't figured it out yet. Um, we can all continue to make content. But. So. There's a woman. And I believe she's figured out what's going on herself. She continues to make content. She kind of had a meltdown for a while there, but she's back on track to being happy and making videos. <sighs> I have no way of contacting her. I've tried messaging her through the app, but it's just like, I don't think she understands that I too am in the app. Uh, but, uh, hmm. 
this is going to require some more research. But, uh, to add some more clarification to SBC 052005, um, it is a YouTube app. I am in it. But it's not seemingly connected to YouTube. It is an app in and of itself, separate from the internet, separate from um, the greater YouTube universe. Um, when I collected the information from um, the young man's app, I basically transferred it from his phone to mine. I was fine watching videos. I was fine um, commenting on um, different and various posts and whatnot. But the minute I made a video and uploaded to YouTube, it's like I uploaded myself into the pocket dimension. I'm afraid to delete my videos because will that delete me? Will that put me out of the pocket universe? And if so, where will it put me? Because time isn't consistent with the regular world in here, um, and I'm making that, uh, that guess based on the fact that uh, my food is always in the fridge. It's never too low or never more. And it never goes bad. Um, if time is linear in here, then it's safe to assume that time outside of the pocket dimension is the same. Um, but I have no way of proving that. Um, oh, um, I've been in here since 2020, so I'm guessing it's 2022. Um, maybe, maybe time, I don't know. There's so many possibilities when it comes to time. Um, maybe if I'm to get out of here, um, maybe time will be, maybe I'll discover that 20 years has passed, 50 years has passed. Um, I'm not sure where this, this dimension is. I mean, if you think about um, time. Time is um, directly related to speed and how fast we're going. Um, the Earth, in fact, our whole galaxy isn't stationary as you would think. It's actually moving on a trajectory through space. So if I step out of the dimension and I'm out of this time, then I might find myself in an open vacuum. That's the concern. Um, if I had some sort of device that could connect me to the outside world, that would be great. The only thing I can surmise is in my house right now is my cell phone connected to my ring light. 
um, waiting for somebody to come and find it. If my wife comes home and finds this in my office, in my room, then maybe she'll turn it into the SBC. Um, I have no way of getting a message to her. If she hasn't moved on, if she's still alive, Anyway, all I can do is play the waiting game until something else manifests. Um, so as it stands, my life is now a control group until something different happens. But until then, you can find me here. Um, wow. Quite the pickle I'm in. <laughs> but we'll figure something out. I'll continue to make videos. Um, If anybody from the foundation is watching, um, please tell my wife what happened. And that way, whatever choices she's made since can at least be quantified positively. Um, Um, I will continue to check my content. I'll continue to check my comments. Um, if anybody can make contact to Director Calvin for me, please let him know the situation. Um, Calvin and I are um, very familiar. We served in the military together. Um, he should be able to rectify the situation. Hopefully. <laughs> anyway, my name is Dr. Andre Jeffords, and I am signing off. Until... Tomorrow, I guess. <laughs>